Okay, here we go. Um, I want to talk about constant, const expert in C++, um, and it'll become apparent where I'm headed in just a moment. Rather than tell you where I'm going, I'll just go there. Um, the const qualifier, the primary use, is so that you can declare non-modifiable objects. So when you declare a limit there to be a, a constant integer, it means you can't write to it. You can use this on just about any type. You can declare constant strings. You can have constant pointers, pointers to const. Um, I'm presuming that you've seen some of this before. Now, in C++, there's a concept, as there is in C, of something called a constant expression. And there are various contexts in the language where um, the value that's being evaluated has to be known at compile time. For example, in C++, an array dimension. Inside the square brackets, whatever that is, that has to be a value known at compile time or computable at compile time. The same thing is true when you specify a bit field. That struct foo has a bit field whose width is six. That has to be a constant value. Now, the generalized concept of a constant expression is that it can have multiple operands and operators in it as long as the whole thing can be evaluated to a single value at compile time. And so a constant object in C++ can be used in constant expressions if it's an integer value and it's got a constant initializer. So this is valid. By the way, that example right there is not valid in C because C treats constant objects differently. But in C++, you can use that max as a symbolic constant. Uh, this is not allowed in C++, even though a smart compiler might be able to figure out that the value of max is going to be 42 by the time it does that initialization. Um, I, uh, I just misspoke. That you can actually use a, vari a value like n as an initializer in the, the definition of a constant object. And what will happen is the compiler will simply quietly turn it into not a, com a constant expression, but it'll just treat it as an object that can't be written to that's being initialized at runtime. And it won't tell you, the, the, the compiler won't tell you when you write that declaration for max up there that do you realize that that thing is not being evaluated at compile time, it's being done at runtime. And you may not find that out until you do something like that array declaration at the bottom, and that's when the compiler will say, no, no, that max is not suitable for using there because that max is not officially a constant expression. And that's where const expert comes in, is that the const expert keyword is there so that you can write a declaration like max there on the second line of code that says, if this thing is not going to be a valid constant expression, I want to know right there on the spot. I want to force that to be done as a constant expression. Don't quietly turn it into something that's at runtime. I want to know now. So that when you say const expert int max equals n, that's going to provoke a complaint. But if you use as the initializer something that really is a constant expression, the compiler will be cool with that. So my colleague Steve Dewhurst likes to say that const expert is conster than const. It's, a, it's in a sense a, something where it's, it's forcing the constness a little bit more rigorously. And so const expert is actually the preferred idiom in modern C++ for doing symbolic constants. Now you might have noticed as I was showing you my examples that I use the style that's known as now as the East const style. The term East const, I believe, was coined within the last couple of years by Simon Brand. And it's just the notion is that the const there is to the right, to the East of the type that it's modifying. And this is in contrast to the, some people call it the West const style, but that's not really, it's, it's const West because it's putting the const over the first. So the const is purportedly modifying the int. And I use the first style for the keyword const, but I use a style which looks like the West style for const expert. Does that seem to be a contradiction, an inconsistency? And I don't think so. 
And I, that's the point of this talk is to explain, is to show you a little insights into the way declarations work as to why I believe this is actually a rational way to do things. And just by way of background, I'll just say, I, I think constant contexts are useful. Unfortunately, a lot of programmers don't use them. They don't, they underutilize const. Because my experience as somebody who teaches this stuff for a living is people just don't get it. They just find const to be confusing. Here's what I think is a, one of the canonical examples is you write a type def, NTCS stands for null terminated character sequence, it's an alias for pointer to character, and then you write in the West style const NTCSP, the question is, the compiler is going to substitute the type def name with its actual underlying type, what is the resulting type of P? And when I give that question out to audiences in the courses that I teach, most people don't get it right, um, which means some, something is falling through the cracks. We want people to use const and to use it well. And so part of the real, my motivation for using East const is I discovered that my own experience is it just people pick it up and understand it better when it's explained well. But I'm not going to get into that argument. I'm going to just show you some of the characteristics of declarations that led me to my particular stylistic practice. And if you like it, great. And if not, well, we can argue on the break if you wish. But if any of you have seen my keynote at CPPCon, one of the key lessons in life, though, is if you're arguing, you're losing. So I don't, we'll discuss it. We won't argue about it. Anyway, um, I will note that const and volatile are twin keywords, are companion keywords. Anywhere you can use const, you can use volatile either in place of or in, in addition to const. Collectively, they're called type qualifiers in C or CV qualifiers in C++. But I'm going to focus mainly on const. Um, and one of the reasons why I think people find const daunting is, I mean, just take your basic pointer declaration, T star P. If you just throw const in all the ways you can, those are all valid declarations involving just T star P and const. How do you sort them out? And it gets worse when you throw volatile in there. That's, by the way, only five of the 55 possible combinations. They don't all have distinct meanings. So I'm going to give you a couple of key insights to help sort this out. Here's the first one is all declarations in C and C++ have this basic structure, which is there are two parts, something called the declaration specifiers and something called the declarator. I'm using color here to highlight the parts. So the declaration specifiers are typically things like keywords static, unsigned, long, int. And the declarator is that name x possibly surrounded by operators, stars and square brackets. The, the name being declared x has a special name. It's called the declarator ID. Now, what's significant about the declaration specifiers, those th the things that make up the leading part is, this is the big deal. It's some of them specify type information. They're called type specifiers. And the rest are non-type specifiers. So things like int, unsigned, long, double, those are type specifiers. But things like extern and static, which are storage class specifiers, or inline, which is a function modifier, actually it's now also a data modifier, those things are not type information. They're non-type information, which plays a slightly different role. The declarator, as you probably know, is made up of operators like stars and ampersands and square brackets. And this is a little known fact, but it is the truth that the declarators, the operators behave according to the usual precedence rules that are used in expressions elsewhere. It's amazing how few C and C++ programmers know this. They learn things like when you see a declarator like star x square brackets n, they learn rules like, well, you read it from right to left. Or, no, no, that's not the truth. The truth is you just use the same old precedence rules you would use in an expression the only difference is you re instead of saying subscript x and then dereference the pointer, you say x is an array of pointers as opposed to a pointer to an array. And when you have a declarator that involves like a function, like that says f is, an, uh, is a function that takes an int and returns a pointer, the precedence of the parentheses for the function declarator are higher than the star, so it's f is a function that returns a pointer. If you want it to be a pointer to a function, you just use grouping parens. That's the nature of the declarator. So here's another insight. 
The type specifiers modify other type specifiers, whereas the non-type specifiers apply directly to the declarator ID, like this. See, the unsigned long and int, they're all working together to describe a type. Static is not cooperating with unsigned long and int. It's actually applying directly to X, the declarator ID. X is the thing that's static. And so uh, you, as a reader of declarations, you have to be able to sort out the types from the non-types and realize the types work together, sort of, the way you apply this is it's X as a static object whose type is array of pointers to unsigned long ends. It's like the non-type information applies first and the type information applies last and the declarator is in the middle. That's the way you analyze something like that. Now, const and volatile, we're focusing on const, they are type specifiers. It's not non-type information, it's type information. So the const there doesn't apply to the v. It's not that v is constant, it's that v is an array of pointers to constant integers. The const modifies the int. That's the way that works. But, oh, and here's something you'd rather not know, but it's also something we deal with, is the order in which you write those declaration specifiers doesn't matter to the compiler. It's matter, I mean, there's no, it's not good style to randomize the arrangement of those words, but you shouldn't get too hung up on whether you say unsigned long or long unsigned. It's the same thing. But, Here's what's the other big insight, is the constant volatile are the only symbols that can appear either in the declaration specifiers or in the declarator. And so notice the bold lines I've put there to, to delineate the de declaration specifiers from the declarator. To the left of that line, the order constant int const doesn't matter. V is an array of pointers to constant integers. But const can be in the declarator. That's V as an array of constant pointers to integers. Notice how the line has shifted between that and that. Okay, and notice also, stylistically, I don't put a space between the star and the const, and that's because the const has the same precedence as the star to its immediate left. That's, they really become one operator, the const pointer operator. And so I, I advocate the east const because it does seem to work. It's very nice uniform reading that the rule is real simple. If you want to be able to put constant or volatile in the right place, you simply write a declaration without any const or volatile in it and read it back, peeling apart the declarator and the type specifiers. And as you read it out loud, you say to yourself, what part do I want to be const? What part do I want to be volatile? And you just put the const or the volatile to the immediate right of the thing that you want to be const or volatile, and you put it in the right place. End of discussion. So that's why P is a constant pointer to a T. It, you know, it, like that, the third one from the top, P is a constant pointer to a volatile T. You just, just uniform, it works. So let's just return for a moment to the one with the type def, NTCS. The trap that people often fall into is thinking of a type def as if it's a macro and they just substitute the text. And that trap leads to the wrong conclusion. That's not what the compiler thinks it is. This is what the compiler thinks it is. But if you use the east const approach, you get a, essentially a line of defense which says that even if you misconstrue the type def as if it were a macro, you still get the proper reading when you read it out loud. P is a constant pointer to a character. Now, let's factor in const expert. Const expert is also a declaration specifier. So just like those first two are equivalent, const char, char const, doesn't matter what order, doesn't matter what order you put const expert with char, char const expert, those two are equivalent. They mean the same thing. Ah, but here's, Here's where it's tricky. The two at the top are not equivalent. And that's, th it's actually that the const expert one, look at the second pair there. That putting the const expert, whether you say care const expert or care ca const expert care in either order, it turns out it's equivalent to having the const in the, st the declarator like that. 
which is really pretty unintuitive. And the reason for that is, ironically, that although const expr conveys type information syntactically, it's not a type specifier. It acts like a non-type specifier. The parallel between the behavior of const expr in static is much closer than the behavior of const expr and const in that declaration. Const is like short or long, whereas const expr is more like static. And so that's the rationale for even though I, I, put, I use east const, it still makes sense to put const expr on the west. And so that's the advice. Use east const expr, but const expr west. And there's the armband. Okay, that's it.